So good afternoon and welcome to our ABNY Women event today, Confidence Through Conversation with Harriet Cole and Mickey Taylor. My name is Samantha Rudin Earls. I am chairman of ABNY Women. And along with the ABNY Women team, I want to welcome both the familiar faces and new ones today. And thank you all for joining. I wanna start by saying we hope that everyone is safe, healthy and doing well. It's hard to believe that this is our first gathering of 2020 and that it is on a Zoom call. The world has changed tremendously since the last time ABNY women met in person, and yet our cause remains the same, to help empower, uplift, and connect working women of New York and address the challenges we face. My grandfather, Lou Rudin, along with his brother, Jack, and other civic leaders founded ABNY, an association for a better New York, in the 1970s during the fiscal crisis when the city was on the brink of bankruptcy. Through strong leadership, dedication, hard work, tenacity, and forward thinking, this group, along with others, was able to help save our city and bring it back from the depths of despair. After my grandfather at the helm until 2001, my father Bill continued the legacy of Abney, showing its resiliency by helping New York overcome the tragic events of 9-11, the hurdles of the Great Recession in 2008, and Superstorm Sandy in 2012, solidifying ABNY as a vital foundation and backbone for the city, its people, and carrying on its crucial mission to never let the city fall. Currently, we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic, an, an, an unspeakable racial divide, and a devastating economic crisis. And yet, with the spirit and DNA in its roots, ABNY is fully committed to tackling these issues and helping once again to rectify the wrongs, right our path, and build a better future. Today, under the leadership of Stephen Rubenstein, ABNY is poised to help our great city once again rise out of the mire, regain its footing, and to create a more equal way forward. In this vein, ABNY has stepped up to start a thoughtful dialogue about the racial injustices that pervade our society and meaningful ways we can address these issues with a series called Black Leadership in New York City, Conversations on Power, Politics, and Racial Justice. ABNY Women, which was founded in 2016 to help support women, is deeply committed to not only uplifting women, but also focusing on ways to level the playing field for women of color. It will take courage, resolve, fortitude, and an all around unbreakable mentality to overcome what lies before us. Two women who exemplify those values are here today to shine a light on how to cogently and consciously move through these obstacles and transform them into successes. They are the inspiring, impressive, and indomitable Harriet Cole and Mickey Taylor. Both are trailblazers and leaders in their communities. Harriet, a best-selling author, began her career at Essence Magazine. She is a nationally syndicated advice columnist and has coached entertainers, corporate executives, and students on how to present themselves effectively. In 2016, Harriet launched Dream Leapers, an educational platform designed to help people access and activate their dreams. Harriet will be joined by Mickey Taylor, a former, be former beauty and cover director at Essence Magazine and current editor at large. Mickey is a leading authority on inner and outer beauty for women of color. Her mission is to embolden women to own their lives, celebrate their beauty, and master their purpose with distinction. She has worked with some of the world's most influential women, including Rosa Parks, Michelle Obama, and Oprah Winfrey. Before I turn it over to these two powerhouses, I wanna thank Julio Peterson at the Schubert Organization and an ABNY board member for introducing me to Harriet, who then opened the door to Mickey. There's that expression, love at first sight. Well, this was love at first Zoom call. And it's truly, I truly feel beyond blessed to have these two women now in my life. So on a technical note, if during the program you have any questions for Harriet and Mickey, you can place them in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We may not be able to answer all the questions during the session, but the ABNY team will follow up after for any of the ones that we miss. 
It is now my true honor to turn over the virtual stage to Harriet Cole, who will then introduce Nikki Taylor. Thank you. Hello, Samantha, and hello, Abney. It's wonderful to be here. I agree. I thank Julio for making this introduction. Connections are everything. We know that, but then when they actually happen, we go, ah, oh, it was because of meeting this person and that person and us coming together that magic happens. And I'm hoping that this hour will feel like a magical hour just for us, a getaway for us to be together, to enjoy each other, to learn from each other. And we're going to do a breathing exercise, but before we do that, I realized I can't do that without my girl, Mickey Taylor, on screen with me. So Mickey, come on screen, girl. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's, <laughs> welcome, Mickey Taylor. Welcome, Hi my there. sister. Harriet. It's so mm. good to have you. You know, we go way back. I started oh, yes. my career at Essence, and Mickey was already there. And 30 years, 30 years Gosh. of of celebrating Black women, of helping Black women to understand beauty from the inside out. And 30 years ago, and even today, we know that there are still questions. There are questions that women have about self-worth. And, you know, in the context that Samantha just gave us, which is we, Abney and the world are looking at Black people, hopefully with uh, refreshed vision. And in this forum, we're going to talk about Black women and all women, but just in this moment of thinking about the challenges that many Black women have faced in looking in the mirror and wondering, am I beautiful? Do I measure up? Those questions have lasted as long as we've been in this business, haven't they, Mickey? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm so encouraged, Harriet, because we have the power to define the times and change and provide answers to those questions and change the way we are seen and honored and heard and perceived. So yeah, I'm very excited about this moment. I think it's a very pregnant moment with great possibilities. Well, see, when we are women who see the glass as almost full, not even half full, just right. you know, it's almost full and we're oh, yeah. filling it up. And so I <laughs> wanted to begin for all of us who are gathered here to ensure that we are fully focused on this moment. And then we are going to take in all of the goodness that we have to offer and to share with you. So I want us to do a breathing exercise together. So I ask everyone, wherever you are, sit up straight. You can't you hear your mama saying, sit up straight. Put your feet flat on the floor. Wherever you are, you can put those feet flat on the floor. Put your hands, thumb and four fingers touching on your knees. That is a posture that holds the spiritual energy in your body. And what we are going to do together is to take three cleansing breaths. And I will guide us in those breaths. After the three, we'll just breathe naturally. You can have your eyes open or closed, but this is a time for you to go inside. So I do recommend closing them. But here we go. As we breathe in deep, Breathe in the goodness that you know is all around you. And as you breathe out long, breathe out any pain and discomfort that you may have in your body. And once again, breathe in deep. Breathe in the possibility of reaching your dreams. And breathe out slowly. Breathe out anything that is standing in your way. And one more time, breathe in deep and believe that the power of being a woman is enough. And breathe out long, let go of anything standing in the way of you understanding your value. And then let's go to our natural breath. Keep your eyes closed and just notice as your breath moves in and out, that's the life source. That's your connection to the divine. On every in-breath, you are in connection with the divine. On every out-breath, you are in connection with the divine. In every moment, 
divinity is right with you. You just have to notice it. Breathe in and out and recognize the power is right there in your breath. Allow yourself to be fully present in this moment, honoring your breath, honoring your connection to God, honoring your connection to women, to this sisterhood of women here at Abney. And as you open your eyes, tell yourself that you will remain fully present so that you can receive everything that you need right now. Please open your eyes. How do you feel? How do you feel, Mickey? Oh, Harriet, that was good. That was good. Thank you for summoning the power within and mm. the presence of breath. Just, we need that. That's how we should start yes. every day. And yeah. it took seconds. I mean, this, why I like to share this treasure of three cleansing breaths is because it allows you to reset. You, you know how sometimes in your day you can get frustrated, those emotions can get you. Yeah. You don't have to let them get you. You can pause, you can go in the bathroom or close your door, or if you're in a cubicle, just put your head down for a moment. I'd rather not have the head down though, because I want your chest up. But close <laughs> your eyes and take three cleansing breaths and remind yourself of your power. As women, we so often forget that we are powerful. And in this, this moment today, we're talking about confidence. And I think that I want to start this conversation, Mickey, talking about something that we all are thinking about. There is a woman who has been named as vice presidential candidate for what is this? I mean, she is an African-American woman. She's of, of Indian heritage. She has it all wrapped up in her and she has done the work to be legitimately on that ticket. And what confidence it had to take for her to get there. And as we think about confidence, I also want us to know that in just this very moment that Kamala Harris was named as Joe Biden's vice presidential candidate, she is being attacked. She is being attacked as mean. She is being attacked as too strong. She is being dismissed in ways that we do not see male candidates being dismissed. And I would like to talk about what it takes to be a confident woman to rise to the top and to be able to deflect those arrows that come to women as soon as they start rising to the top. What do you think about that, Mickey? You know, Harriet, this is a tsunami of a moment, if you will. And, and you know, I summon the Kamala Harris that lies in all of us in that mm. here is a woman who has showed up ready and willing to embrace the cost as well as the power of being her true self. Yeah. She's not afraid to use her voice. She's not centered in an identity based on the opinions of others. She understands the difference between feedback and criticism. And I think what she shows us is that when you know your value, that anything that doesn't stand up against the truth of who you are has to be dismissed. And I think that's what it means to own your life as well as to execute your purpose. It's gonna cost you something to build confidence sure. and you have to be willing and ready to spend it. But to, and to know that that's what purpose at work looks like. It's prepared for the opportunity to shine against the odds. She is, Kamala is a first in many ways. Yeah. In our lives, we're gonna be a first. We're gonna be, yes, until we change the definition of power mm. and show how it's really suited up from within, not based on 
what you put on and your titles and, and who you know, until we change the definition of that, we're at war for the truth, but we have to mm. be willing. And, and, and in order to sustain the fight, we have to make those choices, those purpose-driven choices that support us mentally, spiritually, and physically to keep showing up ready. And Mickey, you know, part of what I think is essential, and this is something that I teach people all the time, is to tell your story, to tell your story well. When you own your story and you're able to share it with others so that they can understand and see who you are, it opens doors. And, and I'm remembering, I, I often say I've had 39 lives because in my, <laughs> in my career, I've done many things. Yes. One of them, as you know, I ran Ebony Magazine for a while. And right. one of the highlights was producing a cover story of Michelle Obama and writing the story right as they, she, because it was she and Barack together running for president. And the day, people will remember, it was the day that she was in New York when she went to The View and she had on that dress and it was a couple of hundred dollars and she sold the dress out. It was from White House Black Market. She sold the right. dress out. Right. So that day, when that happened, the other thing that happened, the cover of the New York Times called Michelle Obama an angry black woman. That was the cover line of the New York Times. The day she was on The View, the day we did a cover shoot with her. And as I sat after the shoot for the 30 minutes that we were allowed to interview with Valerie Jarrett sitting next to her, you know, the last question is always, is there anything else that you'd like to share that I have not asked? And she said, well, yes, Harriet. And, and never mind, we were very close to deadline for producing the magazine. We we're right at the edge. She says, I want you to go to Chicago, to walk down the street I grew up on, to go talk to my mother, to go to my house, and to talk to my friends, because people just don't know me. If they could know me, they would not think I'm an angry black woman. And so Mickey, I got on a plane the next day. I went to her house. I met her mama. I met all these people. I interviewed all of 12 people that she wanted me to talk to, to share who she was and is. And look at what happened. I mean, my story was one of many, but the point of it is telling your story, owning your story and being able to share that. When you share that, the doors open, the veils come away, and people get to see you for who you are. Talk about the art of storytelling, Mickey. You know, your life should really demonstrate that you know who you are. And, and when you know who you are, you wake up every day excited to be that. And I, you know, I love that you use Mrs. Obama as an example because yes. I too have sat in her house with yes. her. And I remember that 2008 being in her home in Chicago and sitting at the dining room table with her. And, it, and after that conversation, it made me say that, that Washington won't change her or mm -hmm. him for that matter, that they'll change Washington. Yeah. And, and that she fills every inch of her shoes. You know, the same woman that I talked with at the dining room table that day is the same woman that went to the White House to do the work because her story was already set. She didn't get there and invent who she was. That's right. And, and I was so impressed by that that I wanted that um, command that she had of who she is, regardless of what others said or thought, that I even wrote a book about it. You know, my second book was called Commander in Chic. Yes. And, and so, because I wanted every woman, I want every woman to be the commander in chic of her life. And I think that certainly there is power in your story. In fact, your story was designed to bless others, but you've got to know that. So the resilience that it took to get where you are, the triumphs, the valleys, um, your own SWOT analysis, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your perceived threats, all of those things, you know, um, form your story. Now, how you use it and how clear you are about it has everything to do with the effect that you have in the lives of others. You know, I always say when who you are speaking to or who you are speaking for becomes more important 
than the thoughts of others. That's when you're really going to be affected. Mm. So each of us has been created unto a purpose. You owe it to yourself to identify that. And that's what you lead with, not what's happening with other people, not who got into the C-suite by doing X, Y, and Z, not by, you know, comparison, as they say, is the thief of all joy, not by losing your joy and trying to be someone else, but recognizing how unprecedented you are and how unprecedented your story is. That is so important, Mickey. And, you know, I currently teach classes at Hunter College and work with Mm -hmm. a lot of young people, helping them to learn how to tell their story. And typically young people, college students, and I will say also young people moving up in their careers are nervous about exposing who they really are. Mm -hmm. You know, well, if you fit a cookie cutter, and this has certainly been true for many black women, well, if I just wear my hair a certain way and dress a certain way, maybe I will fit in. There are many women in general who have done that. If I put on the men's suit and, and, and act like a man, maybe I'll get to where I want to be. And what I know to be true is that if you own who you are authentically, you know your story that includes your family history. And, and whatever your family history is, know that it's a powerful story if you know how to tell it. All of those aspects and attributes that make you yourself, those are the things that help you to navigate your way artfully and for people to say, wow, she is special. Not she's like everybody else, she can fit in. You know, the people don't want folks who fit in. We make the mistake of believing right. that, that they want folks who fit in, and by the way, Some people may criticize you like they're doing Kamala. The more powerful you are, you're going to get the critics. Right. So what? Right. So So what? what? So what? But what do you tell, Mickey, what do you say to folks who are not confident, who are feeling uh, unsure of the next steps? Because that lack of self-confidence is real. Many people have it. And and if if there's some people listening right now who, who are in that state, it's hard to imagine stepping into confidence. What do you say to them? You know, I think I'm going to take a page out of Kamala's book. She said yesterday, it's an open and shut case. This must be your open and shut case, your non-negotiable clause in your uh, plan for life. The truth of the matter is whatever area you babysit won't grow be it your shyness, and I can testify to that because I used to be a shy girl and I divorced her because she got in the way, (laughs) but be it your shyness, your insecurity, your uh, feeling that you don't have the credentials, all of that, whatever area you you babysit won't grow. The problem with that is that life is not a dress rehearsal. You're not getting to come back and try it again. So this is it. So you got to use this time wisely. You know, writer Freya Stark spoke for me when she said, there can be no happiness in life if the things we do are different than the things we believe in. So if you see yourself and you want to be, uh, achieve your dreams or your goals and you see yourself, well, one day I'm going to be this fearless woman. Well, if you don't get that one day on the calendar right now, it's never going to happen. In fact, that's hallucination. So <laughs> that means that you've got to push yourself out of your comfort zone so that you can know what your power zone looks and feels like. And I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna park it right there. Mm. But you'll never know if you don't step out. Some people call it stepping out on faith. Well, good, step out on faith then and put your creator on the line because he can stand the test. Uh But do what you have to do. And and certainly it all has a lot to do with who you surround yourself with. You know, if you don't have a strong support system, you're the sole fount of all that informs you. That means you're going to stay right in that non-productive space. Mickey, you know, one of the things that my mother and grandmother, my grandmother who lived to be 101 years old, they said so often, keep good company. And and that was like a mantra in our house to keep good company. And, And I've shared this with many people over the years because what people often do, and I've been guilty of it, I don't do it now often because I pay attention. When you feel low or angry, you know, any emotional, off center, what many people do is to pick up the phone, call someone and complain. 
how many times have we talked about our partners in ways that we regret because then the people we told are looking at them side-eyed and we're not mad anymore, right? How right. often have we talked about our boss, our coworker, our children, whoever it might be, and stoked the flames of negativity? The lesson I learned from my family, keep good company, is instead of doing that, consciously choose to call someone who will help to brighten your light if your light is dim. It is somebody who will tell you the truth so that you can hear it. Someone who will love you in a way that is not suffocating, but supportive. And this requires conscious effort at the moment when you just might be in a rage. But if you can do that and choose to surround yourself and to connect with people who are positive, who are good company, it makes such a difference. And you talk about creating these celebration circles. I love yes. the idea of this. And I would love for you to describe to everyone here what a celebration circle is and how you form one. So Harriet, you know, you were just like preaching to the quiet a moment, choir a moment ago, because I don't entertain people who come to my pity and frustration parties. But a celebration circle is truly a supportive group, a team of celebrants, as I call it, who they're in your life to push, polish, inform, and check you and remind you of the truth of who you are. Yeah. Because your greatness was not designed to operate in isolation. Your greatness was designed to be nurtured, to thrive. And so you do need a, a support group around you. But one of the ways to curate that is to pay attention to who's in your life at any given season. And what are their values? There are people who want to be in your celebration who have tried to offer you wisdom or advice. And maybe you didn't think they were so cool. Maybe you mm -hmm. thought they couldn't possibly relate to what you were going through in the office. Really, the playbook is not that original. <laughs> there are people who have lived, we call them wisdom keepers, we call them the checkpoint girls, those who may be younger than you, who can help you be even tech savvy, if you will. You know, stop writing a, a, uh, a story, an essay, when you should just write two sentences in response to an email that you got that didn't hit <laughs> you so well. But yeah. So, and these are the people who want to see you win. They have your best interest in mind. They even help you get out of your own way. So curate that circle, begin to look around. Maybe one of your aunties is on that circle. Maybe there's a niece who's on that circle. Uh, your hairdresser could be on your circle. Lord knows we tell the hairdressers everything. So yeah, and then be conscious of their values. Are they trustworthy? Are they tail bearers? If it's somebody who will take your confidence and share that in another conversation, that's not the girl to be in your mm -hmm. celebration circle or the guy to be in your celebration circle. You know, are they empathetic? But again, don't help you wallow in that space. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really important to have a celebration circle. We cannot, especially in these times, move through life without one. That it's essential. So to who you are now, it's essential to where you're going, and it's essential to help you sustain it when you get there. Amen to that. <laughs> I want to tell folks, as you are listening, you can also write questions in the chat box. If you'd like to ask any questions, we're happy to answer those questions. Time goes by so fast. I just want to make sure I, know, I name that right now. So if you have questions, we'll try to get to them. Mickey, you know, we are living in such an interesting time. This is now month five for most people of being either in complete quarantine or partial quarantine. And what I have heard from talking to hundreds of women and, and others over this period is that many people feel lonely, even though we have these calls and, and because of technology, we're able to see each other more than we were when we were jumping on a phone call, we can't hug each other. We, we're often working more than ever because we feel that we have to fill up every moment in work as opposed to having the kind of balance that we once had. And one of the questions that we got in advance of um, today from one of the participants was about balance. And, and I want us to talk about striking balance 
in these times, because it's very different when, I mean, honestly, many people have told me they don't even have time to get up and go to the bathroom because there's one Zoom call after another. Striking a balance and also figuring out how to navigate technology and humanity, because that is always this push-pull. What are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, one of the things I know to be true is that um, research says that we act in harmony with what we perceive ourselves to be. So I want to identify this thing called loneliness um, mm. because social distancing does not mean social disengagement. Yeah. And what I know four months in or whatever it's been is that I still have a life that's filled with fellowship. Because in truth, the best relationships are reciprocal. Relationships are your wealth. So you want to stay connected and engaged with people and be a part of their lives just like they're a part of your life. And so that's critical. Now, you have to define the difference between, let's say, your work life or your who and your do, if you will. So, yes, you're on these Zoom calls and you, you feel like you're busier than ever you got to set boundaries. Yes. You can't give work the all access pass to your life mm. because no matter how much you enjoy your life, your work life, you are more than that. And you don't want to be consumed by that. You still have to operate on a schedule that allows time for self. So one of the ways to do that is to um, start what you know you need to check you know that and nurture what you want to grow. You got to learn how to lovingly say no. You can't be answering emails, you know, all during the night, every time your computer pings. In fact, it shouldn't even be in the same room as that haven known as the bedroom, because that's where you go for that period of healing called sleep, not yeah. to be on duty. Uh, you got to even you may have nothing to do with what's going on around you. You didn't create COVID, but you have everything to do with what goes on inside of you. So stop taking things to bed with you that can't, you can't use. Some of us take the next day's meeting to bed with us. So that's the same thing as being accessible. We take our bills, worries, frustrations with us. We're worried about others, what others will think if we say, no, I can't be available. No. Again, that goes back to teaching people how to honor you. So I am not available at this time. Here's when I will be available. Set now, the tone. Now, 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 Mickey, that sounds good, but I'm going to give a little pushback because I can hear people. I yeah. can hear Come on. More, more than 50 million people have lost their jobs in the past five months. The, what is happening, it is disastrous what is happening outside. And I've talked to a lot of people who say, look, I feel so fortunate to have a job. I'm worried that if I step off and, and, and dare to say that I will put boundaries around my time, that I could lose my job. And I, I, I think it's important for us to address how can people still create boundaries when they are having this thought process that says, if I don't do everything, I may not have anything to do. First of all, you have to stop manufacturing fear mm. because that's what that is. That's fear. And that says that you don't know your value. And if you don't know your value, you can't teach others how to. So if you have this fear that if you're not at everyone's beck and call, if you, if you have to pull, pull the shade on, uh, being respected, th then that means that you're, you're a flexitarian. You're real flexible in Ooh. how much they honor you. You're real flexible in, in, in how much respect you're going to get because you don't think enough of yourself to say that I'm here at this table because I'm coming to contribute. I'm not just here because they need a, a, someone in this space and I'm just a number. So you got to set that tone. Again, that's your this is your command central. And the first thing you have to do is fire your inner critic. Get rid of everything that dwells there because that's going to control your actions. You have to get rid of everything there that's not useful to you. So you have to know your value. Yeah. 
and, and it's, it's essential to know your value. And if anyone listening here is like, what are you talking about? And I say that because I've noticed, you know, I've been on many panels, many discussions, and very often when you're in person or if we had all the cameras on, we would see people looking at us saying, well, mm -hmm. they're different. They're okay. different. You know, the people on the day is the people speaking are different. And I want to make sure everybody knows it's not true. If there's anything that's different about Mickey and me, it is that we don't give up, that right. we keep working, keep at it, keep at it. Don't stop. And many of you do, and some of you don't. And if you step back and give up, then you can feel different from others. But this is where the celebration circle comes in, where you can be re-inspired right. in order to pursue what you, your heart tells you you should do. As Samantha told you, Dream Leapers is, is the brand under which I work right now. The intention is to help people access and activate their dreams. I believe in going inside, that, that a breathing exercise that we just did. I believe in the power of meditation listening to the voice inside that will tell you what you want to do and what you should do if you hear it. But then what happens? And, and my recommendation to every one of us, something is a takeaway that you can use for the rest of your life. Whatever that dream is, that is top of mind for you now, write it down and spend at least one hour every day cultivating it. One hour, just one every day including the weekend and you say oh that's more for me to do what do you spend an hour on how many shows have you binge watched how you know think of the things that you do in your so-called free time make you a priority and give yourself an hour every day to cultivate what your heart is telling you to do and you are going to feel so good after a week after a month because it won't be what has happened for many of us Oh, last year I said I was going to do this and I forgot. Or five years ago I said I was going to do this and I forgot. That is, you know, Mickey, I think that if there's any difference, it is just the stick to itiveness, the doing of it. Yeah, Harriet, you know, one of the things, and, and I do a lot of executive coaching, corporate mm -hmm. coaching, and one of the things I remind us is that each of us is a brand within a brand. And you can't lose brand you in fear of brand them. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that every day that you come to the table, uh, many of us are coming there virtually now. And it, it means that you come to contribute, not just go to work. That's right. If you are just a worker bee and you're just going to work, well, uh, maybe you don't uh, feel that you are... Uh, that any, maybe you don't feel that you won't lose that position. But if you come to contribute your distinct value and you know what you know what you know, you have to understand that that is value in kind. So don't be in fear of it. Don't let someone else make you doubt your own gift. What a tragedy that is. Yeah. And furthermore, the gift goes with you wherever you go. <laughs> many, please, many women I know not only contribute at a corporation, but they have their own companies as well because that's their right. gift is even bigger than what they're able to bring to the table. And that's the kind of confidence that outshines anything. So you all, again, it goes back to knowing your value. It sounds so basic, but I'm telling you, you want to get an A, in that master class called self-perception. Yes, indeed. So we've gotten some questions. I want to go with um, the first one, which is, should you, this is good. Should you correct someone when they keep getting your name incorrect during a meeting and continuously do so after you correct them? Woohoo! <laughs> yes, you should. Yes, you yes, should. You because should. there's something in a name, and that, and you have to lead with the correct pronunciation of your name, because again, you have to teach others how to honor you, and on a most basic level, don't allow anyone to call you out of your name. That's the way I yeah. see it. If you can't pronounce my name, you are calling me out of my name. 
And there's, and I agree with you, Mickey, and there's a way to do it. You can do it with a smile on your face. You can say, oh, you know, let me remind you. And, and, and if, if there is some way of saying it and it sounds like something else, so you help them, uh, you know, look, Kamala is having it right now. How they are messing up that woman's name. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Look, well, I remember working with Mary J and Mm -hmm. Mary J would talk about herself in the third person sometime when she wanted people to understand who she was. And she would say, well, from Mary J Blige. Yeah. Yeah. Or lead with it. Just say, you know, I said to Mickey Taylor and people get a good laugh out of it, but they get the point. Yes. Because it's humorous, but it ain't funny. They get the point. And f- so for me, because my name is not unusual, but the spelling is, I'm mm-hmm. constantly correcting folks. And I do it carefully. If I get a note, I will say at the end, and by the way, this is the correct spelling of my right. name. And right. it's okay to do that. You don't want to be angry, though, when you do it. No, you, you, not at you, all. You want, to be, uh, you want to be strategic. Here's another question. Well, this is from Cheryl Jones. What are your thoughts on mental health, especially among the black community where there is a stigma? What message can you and all of us uh, share to encourage seeking mental health support? Support is exactly that. And that's the key word. You don't have to be strong in all areas. You don't have to know everything. You don't even have to know how to figure your way out of an internal concern. There is support there for you to get it. And it's not about what anyone else thinks. I know that the culture has had this thing that's saying we don't need help. We don't get help. Who are we not to need help? You just look at our history alone. If you look at what we are enduring in America right now, who are we not to need support? The greatness in you, I just said that, the greatness in you was not designed to thrive in isolation. You know it's not designed to thrive under attack, so get what you need. If you need more than a celebration circle, get in the book and schedule yourself to get the support you need because you have work to do and you will not allow anything to hinder your purpose. And you know, Mickey, for many people, with jobs, insurance offers mental health support. But I know Absolutely. plenty of people who say, I would never go to a therapist through my insurance because then the job knows about it. I want you to understand they are not, they can't know what happens in, in right. those appointments because that's what the HIPAA, the HIPAA tells you, you can't know that. Right. There is no shame in going to the doctor. A mental health professional is just another kind of doctor. There's no shame in it. Right now, especially when people are feeling isolated, there are, just, just like your regular health appointment you can have as telehealth, you can have mental telehealth. If you need help, get help. And I wanna encourage people to remember that your friends typically are not the people you should be going to. And even if your friends are psychiatrists and psychologists, you still shouldn't be going to them because they're your friends. But we often rely on friends for the wrong things. And and mental health support, they're not qualified. They love you, but they're not qualified to do that. Right. So you have to know their expertise. Exactly. And that that is above their level. So you want to go where you can get solution-oriented help that works. Because you, again, this is part of owning your life. And you want to be determined to do that, you know, without hesitation. So go and get, schedule yourself because, and you will feel great about it because this is what you're doing to support the greatness that lies in you. That's so true. And here's another question that came, what and or who keeps you thriving? Oh my gosh, faith. I, you know, for me, faith is nothing if it's not defining your life. I couldn't have a kind of, the kind of faith that only worked on Sunday. I needed mm-hmm. 24-7. And so faith is what keeps me thriving. That's the joy in my smile, that strong belief system in a creator who cannot fail, who has never failed me yet. And, then, and I've got that manual. You know, the Bible is my playbook. It, uh, it's not untested advice. It's sound wisdom. And so 
Yeah, that's what keeps me thriving. Family keeps me thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got great relationships. I always say relationships are your wealth. So I've got mm -hmm. great relationships, that celebration circle. I am never alone. And so, um, you know, these are the things that, that I have put in place to help Nikki Taylor thrive. Yeah. And I'm clear about it. I'm yes. clear about it. So my well stays full. I don't pull the glass up half empty. The glass right. is always overflowing. I've gotten used to what overflow feels like. Oh, and, and, yeah. and that's a great feeling. And for those who may not be feeling overflow, hopefully this is helping you understand you can. It is possible for every single person to feel that. That's and right. It doesn't. It, it, it is not uh, measured by how much money you have in the bank. No. A lot of people think that, and it's very nice to have money in the bank. There's nothing, I'm, I'm not uh, suggesting that that isn't good, but that is not the measure of happiness, of contentment. Right. It just isn't. As people say, nobody on their dying bed says, oh, I wish I had worked more. They just don't do that. It is good to, for you to love your work. There's no right. question about that, if you right. can. But I agree with you. Faith is the foundation. Family is next. And sometimes for some people, family is the family you have created, like those That's celebration right. circles. It's not always right. people that you love by blood, no. but the people who have become your circle of love and who are supportive. And as I said before, but this is really important, who tell you the truth, the way that you are able to hear it. And, and why that's so important is because if folks are telling you something in too harsh of a tone so that it just hurts, as a, then you can't hear. We need to hear the truth. We don't want to hear people yesing us. No. And that does happen too. Yes, people are worthless. And actually, they are, they are detrimental because they tell you something is true when it's not. Right. Yeah, you want to watch yeah. people, too, who make withdrawals in your life. You want mm. people who make deposits. I call them soul deposits. Mm. They build you up. They're things that they, uh, it's wisdom that you can multiply. Mm -hmm. And that's critical. And, and, and you want to keep your wealth filled from these sources that you can count on. Because what happens is, if you're not careful, you will start to give and live out of your lack. Mm. And I'm talking about your internal lack. Yeah. And so you don't want to do that. So it's really important to, you know, surround yourself with those. And, and, and again, to create that time for self. I'm telling you so many times we are frustrated because we don't create time for self. Time for self could be a slow bath for you. Time yep. for self could be rising early to have meditation before the family right. gets up, especially here in COVID-19. You really need time for self. You need to hear your own thoughts. You need to know what's important to you. Yeah. Time for self could be journaling at the end of the day. It, you know, for me, I try to do mind-body exercises. So, you know, yesterday I did a Tai Chi. I did tai chi. Nice. And that Tai Chi, you got to focus in the moment. Otherwise, you, sure you might do. hurt yourself. <laughs> now, Mickey, we have yeah. uh, three questions that, and not a lot of time. So I want to do this quickly so we can get to all of them. Yes. Uh, oh, and now the questions are just pouring in. So we're going to do this fast. What are some things that corporations can do to support Black women seeking advancement? Give me one idea. Listen, don't talk when they should listen. Ooh, have Black women at the table and listen. I, I agree. So I'm going to move on. Next one. What advice can you give women seeking advancement in white male dominated industries? To not dim their light. To not dim their light. To show up with the information. To make those deposits, contributions. Every company wants to succeed. And they are against the odds right now. So now it's a time for you to bring all your brilliance to the table. And not and worry about who, who the color of the person who is above you or next to you or what have you. And I want to add that men often act like they know what, whatever yeah. it is that they're supposed to be doing, even when they don't. So you can call their bluff, but you could also take a page out of their book. Act like you know, because if you don't know, you're going to figure it out fast. 
Okay, here's another one. Do you each have a personal mantra that keeps you focused when see, things seem to be out of control in your life or even just a daily affirmation? Oh yeah, mine is, I came of age with the edict that said, if the best is possible, then good is not enough. So as long as I know I'm bringing my best to it, yeah, then I'm good, then I'm good. And because also, again, that lies with that other one, you know, having the, the, the serenity, and you know, the serenity prayer, the courage, right. courage to know the difference, know what you can control, yes. anchor your control over it just by doing your best. And, you know, I learned something that I use all the time, which is see God in each other. Yeah. If you look at others and look for the light, look for the highest in others, especially when you're mad, when really you just want to tear them down or tear yourself down. See God in yourself and see God in others. Okay, here's another one. Do you believe that more attention should be paid to women's constant state of change and being in a constant work of progress? Is, it's not a one day overhaul of self, but a constant, structured, consistent metamorphosis so that women understand that it's okay to take time to develop. Wow, that's a loaded question. Yeah. So, so the, one of the things I always say uh, is don't ask permission where you have authority. You have authority to shine. You have authority to show up ready. You have the sh authority to go the distance. You, you, more often than not, we're trying to play it safe so we don't offend somebody. If you lead with wisdom and love, you won't worry about that. Uh, yes, you could. there's a list of things that should be paid attention to for women, but we can't wait. The time mm -hmm. is now. So we've got to get out there and show up. We've got to assume it, you know, as one of my wisdom keepers taught me, and, and operate in that and, and not be... Um, so adverse to what I call the risk. My mother and father taught me to be success, to be risk adverse is to be success adverse. Mm. So yes, you've got to take the risk. It's going to cost you something, but it is so well worth it. And, and I'm going to say, I don't think that we're in a constant state of change. I, 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 I don't look at it in that way. I understand that some people may think that, but strategy is really important in life and certainly in work. So you don't share everything that's in your mind and every, right. you know, the, you, your strategy needs to be, what do you want to share outwardly? You know, your celebration circle could be where you share it all, right. but what do you share outwardly? It needs to be strategically offered in a way that helps you to reach your goal, which is why what I tell people for every meeting that you have, for every engagement, including with your loved ones, set an intention. What do I want the outcome to be? What is my intention for this engagement? And if you set that, that's going to help you to steer your course so that you aren't feeling like you're, you know, meandering. Here's another right. one. Here's another one, Mickey. Um, having a healthy set of mentors is critical to our personal development. What's the most effective way to genuinely request the mentorship of inspiring leaders like yourselves? Contact reach out, connect. You know, it is, um, we, it is so, vir it is virtually easy for us to connect with one another. So reach out. And, and even what I've found among leaders who can take you on as mentors, if you follow them on their social media, you're going to get a mentorship right. program because they're always putting out messages that are going to help you grow, help you solve problems, help you overcome adversity. So if they can't take you on as a, a mentor directly, just follow them on social media. And, and let me add, I do not recommend that you reach out to someone you don't know and say, will you be my mentor? That's no. like saying, will you marry me before we had a first date? <laughs> so I do not recommend that. Please don't leave this and write to us and say, will you be my mentor? Instead, I think when you are inspired by someone, you can write to them as you, on social media or however else you reach them. I was inspired when I heard you say X. I am going to use that. That piece of wisdom I value. Would it be okay for me to stay in touch with you from time to time? You want to spell that person's name right? These are basic things, but they make, they make a huge difference. You want to right. spell their name right? You right. want to have a clear thought that shows that you put, you put some contemplation into this overture. 
so that they right. feel it, a good mentor mentee relationship is one that is reciprocal. Both people so. are, are gaining from that. Here's one more question. Cause we, and then we're, we're out of time. Yeah. What advice can you give on addressing unconscious gender bias in the workplace, especially when it can be as subtle as always being tasked with note taking? Hmm. Mm. Again, your life should demonstrate that you know who you are. As I said at the beginning, you got to know your value and you got to put it out there. So if you're always being tasked with note taking, in addition to taking the notes, you got to give some back. You got to put some out there on the table. You got to share your ideas. You got to show that you're ready to lead and not follow. And you can't complain when you do it. You have to be yeah. creative. Again. So that, and, and yes. you, you could also ask, would it be, would it be possible for so-and-so to take notes today? Because I've got a lot of ideas that I want to share today. You know, you can be creative with it. Ladies, look, our time, look, an hour, an hour has zipped unbelievable. by. It has unbelievable. zipped by. Samantha, yes. can you imagine that an hour is up? <laughs> oh, God. I could stay with you forever and ever. This was truly inspiring and beyond uplifting. This was a master class in confidence, and you two are beacons and shining lights. I feel like a weight was lifted, and you know, the purpose of Abney is to be a support system and a circle. Um, and, and now we know what it's truly like to be a celebration circle and we don't want, we're not going anywhere. We're here for everyone. So we encourage people to go to abney.org to learn more. These two women, thank you for your service and showing us truly what it is. Someone said, I heard them say recently, dream big and then dream bigger. And you That's two right. just showed us what that is. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank and both you. of you're us, welcome. both Mickey and I offer personal leadership coaching. And if you want to be in touch with us, I think our, our emails are, are there. Are they there or our contact information? Mickey, let's yes. put it in the chat box right now so people know how to reach us. Sure, sure. So um, certainly our uh, social media handles are up there, but they can reach me, uh, Mickey Taylor Zero at iCloud.com. There you go. It's yeah. wonderful to be with you, Samantha. Thank you so much for inviting us. This was just, the, we knew that hour was gonna whiz by and it has. Yes. Mickey, it oh. is always a delight to talk to you. Thank you for inspiring me and Likewise, all of us. Likewise, darling. Likewise, thank you. Thank you ladies and thank you everyone for taking the time to be with us.